The first five years of a child's life are a critical time for exposing children to language, words, and reading. But studies have shown children in lower-income families often don't get the same rich literary environment that higher-income children do. Now, some groups are trying to help close that gap in unusual places, including an effort in New York City where parents and children go every week, the laundromat. Special correspondent Lisa Stark of our partner, Education Week, has our story for our regular education segment, Making the Grade. It's the weekend rush at a neighborhood laundromat in the Brownsville section of Brooklyn. There's washing and drying, folding and reading. Oh, no. Pete stepped in a large pile of blueberries. For a couple of hours on this Sunday afternoon, adults are sorting clothes. And librarian Samantha Owen has scooped up their children for story time. Where's she putting the paint? Up high. I really want the kids to have fun and, you know, be really engaged with story time. The ultimate goal is to jumpstart the reading and language skills of children in this neighborhood, where a third of families with young children live in poverty. So why not try to reach them here, where families congregate, says NYU's Susan Newman, an expert in early literacy. These children are fundamentally ready to learn and excited about learning. But if you look at their communities, in many cases, what we have designated as book deserts, in other words, they don't have the access to materials and books that are, are absolutely essential for early reading and vocabulary development. But can this make a difference? That's what Newman's trying to figure out. What color is he? Very good. This program is not the only one bringing books to laundromats. There have been efforts in more than two dozen cities. But this is the first formal study to measure what happens when you turn a space like this into a space like this. Researchers are observing at three New York City laundromats, story areas added last July in Brooklyn, the Bronx, and Queens, comparing them to laundromats that are just laundromats. And so what we noticed is essentially there is no literacy activity in control sites, none. I mean, virtually none. But in our literacy-related play center, over a period of six weeks, we saw 150 different literacy-related events. It was a, a dramatic change. This is part of a broader attempt to promote literacy in ordinary locations. Jane Park Wu is with the Clinton Foundation's Too Small to Fail initiative. Well, we wanted to meet families where they are, in the everyday places they go with their children. And we know that the majority of their time is spent out of school in many of these informal environments. So we know they're going to the grocery store, they're going to their local church, they're going to the laundromat. Too Small to Fail is a partner in the New York endeavor. What's that? So is the laundromat industry. Number one, we've got the right audience. Uh, these are the families uh, and caregivers, parents and the kids who need the most help when it comes to literacy and access to books. Brian Wallace oversees the Coin Laundry Association and its foundation, whose members own 5,000 laundromats, one in every six nationwide. You know, your folks are here for an hour and a half or two hours, so there's time to have those interactions. And there's also a recurring element. You know, chances are the folks that are here this Saturday morning will be here next Saturday morning and the Saturday morning after. Wallace recruited owners, such as Jose Almonte, to sign on. It's good for the parents. You know, they bring the kids, kids so instead of be running around, they'll be reading, playing. They, they spend a good quality time. This effort began in laundromats with simple signs urging parents to read, sing, and talk to their children. Then it evolved into these more elaborate reading centers. And I was like, oh my goodness, they put a little play area, reading area, and the kids can like be entertained and they can build their social skills. Nori Morales' oh, six-year-old son is a fan. That's definitely educational because he's picturing something in his head and he's bringing it out. He's using his words and he's, he's building a whole story. Researcher McKenna Alvarez has been observing and interviewing families at the laundromat. Ultimately, we kind of saw that children and families who had access to a literacy area recognized so many more books. Um, they were a lot more enthusiastic about reading. 
One disappointing finding, having just the reading area alone draws in children, but not many parents, so kids end up playing and reading by themselves. But with librarians added, about 30 percent of parents joined in at some time during story hour. Parent involvement is key, says Alistair Chang, who oversaw Libraries Without Borders, also part of the New York effort. We are looking for behavioral shifts because those are long lasting and those will follow these parents and these kids way beyond the laundromat. Children with access to books and to adults who regularly read to them are more likely to be prepared for kindergarten and like Ryan Molina, reading fluently in third grade. Another day has started. I stretch and yarn and shout. How do you think you became such a good reader? Read. <laughs> you read? Yeah. <laughs> Studies suggest students who read well by the end of third grade are more likely to succeed in high school and in their careers. Lillian Pierce Hunt, who encourages her grandson to read, welcomes efforts like this. And this area that the percentage is low in reading and math. So anything to help to bring those scores up. It starts with stuff like this where parents spend time and they're busy and it's not that you don't want to read to your kids, you just don't have the time. The hope is to expand literacy areas to thousands of laundromats nationwide. But this program is not without its challenges. Children may still find the washing machines more interesting and parents may still be too busy to pay attention to story time by the dryer. There's also the cost, about $2,300 for this test version. What's behind the snowman? And the ongoing need for librarians, new books, and supplies. But library manager Corey Rodriguez believes it is worth the effort. It's very hard sometimes to explain how great it is and how we feel that it's definitely a positive experience. Even if we reach a child for five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, they're walking away with something. Oh, look, strawberry. One book at a time. For Education Week and the PBS NewsHour, I'm Lisa Stark in New York City.